Joining us now for more is retired U.S. Air Force Brigadier General and Newsmax contributor Blaine Holt. So great to see you today. So I want to get your take on, on what happened. And I guess, you know, to the congressman's point, why are we even there? Wow. A congressman calling balls and strikes. Go yeah. Newsmax. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's great to be That's with both reaction. of you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we should not be there. The, the, the reason for the mission has shifted. ISIS was a big problem. Uh, uh, spawned out of our departure in Iraq. But, you know, we hammered ISIS. The the thing is, the geopolitical sands beneath our soldiers' feet has changed dramatically. It's uh, we're, We were attacked by pro-Syrian government uh, militias. Think about that. The host nation has militias out there attacking us with the blessings of Iran, and it's getting more dangerous. And so what it is is you don't you don't have troops in harm's way when you don't know why they're there. And if it's just about mission support site Conoco, well, to the congressman's point, then we shouldn't be there at all. But we also uh, should, you know, any attack on us has to be responded with forcefully. But it's now time to uh, reconsider our geopolitical position in the Middle East. Yeah, General, So, and for some reason, we still want back in on the Iran nuclear deal, which was not a good deal to begin with. I want to show you on the map just where all these strikes took place, just so everyone at home uh, knows the area that we're talking about just east of the Mediterranean Sea, as you can see there strategically. Uh, what do you read into where these strikes actually happened? To me, uh, a lot of our oil interests are also in this region. Yeah, so a, a, a commercial company, Conoco, has oil interests there. Is that a reason to put uh, our forces in harm's way? Um, we can debate that. But uh, why would we dare do that when we have all the oil and gas we need right here in the United States and we see the wages of not tapping those reserves from Kabul to today, and now China getting what it wants on its path to get rid of the U.S. dollar with these reproachments between Iran and Saudi, Syria and Saudi, Syria and uh, Turkey, uh, all led by the Russians and China while the State Department sits at home. Boy, I sure hope they're saving some money over there at Foggy Bottom because yeah. they don't yeah. seem to be doing a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I, I want to move on now to Russia and Ukraine. Political is reporting that Putin is looking to have Russia place nuclear weapons in Belarus. So what kind of threat does this pose to Europe and the Western world? Well, we've been talking about this a long time. There's been so much banter about nuclear weapons, uh, World War III and these types of possibilities. This is this is very concerning. Uh, this is actually doing something about it from a Russian standpoint. They are pushing tactical nuclear weapons into Belarus. And those don't just threaten uh, Ukraine, by the way. Those threaten uh, the neighboring countries. They destabilize the situation worse. And again, we have to ask ourselves, what is our strategy in this region if you've got uh, the Ukrainians screaming for logistics yeah. resupply, yet we're very upset with Russia, and we don't seem to be having a peace plan of our own. And then just the, the bravado. Uh, by Joe Biden when he's asked about the the Pu uh, the Putin G summit in in Moscow uh, last week. Another headline that caught my attention over the weekend. This one coming from the Wall Street Journal, uh, talking about Japan and Germany. Uh, they're preparing for war once again, which should get anybody's attention. Memories of World War II still causing anxiety in both countries, but a rising generation feels less constrained. And this one, less sure of the U.S in the face of Russian and Chinese aggression. What do you make of that? A, it's a very simple formula, and we see it time and time again. When America projects weakness, when it looks like our government won't do anything, when we see our troops getting into trouble uh, in little pockets uh, around the world, um, then other countries, free countries, have to reconsider their own defense needs, have to step up to the plate. Japan has been doing this for some time, uh, because they're very disturbed and alarmed by U.S. politics just blowing in the wind with money always as the precursor for our motivations rather than diplomacy. Yeah, and just how historic this is. Both those countries haven't rearmed at the same time since the 1940s, since the Second World War. Uh, cause Truman's rolling in his grave. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> General, we'll pick this back up as, uh, as the week goes on. Thanks for being with us. Good to see you.